So in this video, I wanted to cover some of the requirements that we have for the formal lab report. Specifically, we're asking you guys to be able to draw your structures in the formal lab report using ChemDraw and also to show the mechanism where possible using ChemDraw. Now, admittedly, ChemDraw is a little bit finicky sometimes when it comes to drawing the mechanisms, but I'll try and show you guys some of the easier ways to deal with ChemDraw and then drawing our arrows to show the flow of electrons uh, using mechanism arrows. So to begin with, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how to kind of get your uh, structures in the correct size that would make it easier to put into a, a Word document. If you go to, let me, um, let me go here real quick. So when you go to File and Apply Document Settings From, you'll see a couple of different lists here. So this list is just a number of other journals, uh, scientific journals that um, commonly are used to publish uh, chemical research. If you go up to the top here, the ACS document 1996, if you go ahead and click on that, it might pop up a little window asking you, are you sure it's okay? Go ahead and say yes if it does. But this is kind of going to set the limits and the size of the structures that you draw. So take a look at this, right? So now when we draw a benzene ring, it's going to draw the structure. And this is about the right size, what you want for a Microsoft Word document. If you don't set the shape, then you might have to go back and resize it manually, and it might throw things off a little bit. So this might make it a little bit easier for you. So file, uh, apply document settings from, and then ACS document right here. Okay. So let's do the uh, a quick mechanism, just an acid-base reaction between benzoic acid and uh, sodium hydroxide. So let's draw our benzoic acid. I'm going to zoom in here, right? Just make it a little bit easier. There's benzoic acid. And now let's do sodium hydroxide. There's that. We're going to have to come back and fix a little, a couple of items here, but that's okay. Let's turn that into an oxygen. We'll turn this into a hydrogen. Let's add some lone pairs because we're going to need to show where the electrons are coming from and where they're going to. All right. And our negative charge, we'll plop a negative charge out here. Now that red squiggly line stuff around there is just saying that, hey, something is unusual about your structure here. Please check it out. You can turn that off by highlighting. And uh, where is that here? Display warning. So right clicking and going to display warnings. And I'll just turn that off. Might make it a little bit easier to kind of manipulate things. Okay. So now we need to show the flow of electrons for this reaction. Right, the negative attacks the positive, right? So the base attacks the acid. So we need some arrows up here on your toolbar is where our arrows are. Over here's the reaction arrows, right? Remember you're dealing with uh, double-headed arrows, which is this set of eight right here. All right, these are single-headed arrows. That's for free, um, excuse me, free radicals or single electrons. And then these are uh, more resonance arrows maybe, or that's probably what they're most likely used for. So stick with this set of eight right here. Okay, so it's a little bit, you know, you're gonna, it's going to take a little bit of practice to get used to exactly what each arrow looks like, but that's all right. Okay, so here we'll use this arrow right here. We'll send an arrow from that lone pair to grab that hydrogen. Okay, so we just click, hold, and drag. All right, so click, hold, and drag, and then you can resize and, you know, um, spin the electron, uh, excuse me, spin the arrow around to whichever way you want. Now, if you look at this arrow right here, it might not be exactly where you want it to be pointing to. So we can just select it. And up here on the top, right, if you see my mouse, it turns into a little, uh, it turns into a little arrow. And that's my rotation tool. So I can kind of rotate this a little bit, right, to make it look a little bit nicer. And then I can use my arrow keys on my keyboard to manually kind of position where I want that arrow to be. That looks good. Okay, so there's my first arrow. I make a bond to the hydrogen. I need to break a bond to hydrogen. So I need to show an arrow breaking this bond right here. We're going to use this arrow here, right? So I'm going to click kind of where I want the arrow to start and hold and drag. Now you see it's pointing in the right direction, uh, excuse me, in the wrong direction here. So what you can do, select it, go to object and flip it. Okay, so object and flip the structure or whatever you have selected right there. Once I do that, I just have to rotate this again. 
and I can position it using my arrow key. Sorry if my keyboard's a little bit loud there, but I'm just using that to kind of move this around. I can change this, I can resize this, I can rotate this to make it look nice and pretty. Okay, then I can zoom back out and admire my excellent handiwork. My gosh, that is an amazing looking set of reaction arrows right there. Okay, and then don't forget to go and finish this off by showing what happens at the end of it, right? You know, we can add our structure in there, benzo 8, right? It's just telling us be careful there's a charge and indeed there is right if we do this reaction we'll make benzo 8 and we'll make uh, water right and there is the end of our reaction okay so play around a little bit with these arrows right to get uh, used to drawing the flow of electrons to get your mechanism don't forget to, whoops, don't forget to uh, change your document settings. That might make it a little bit easier for you. I would say as a word of caution, change your document settings before you start to draw. Otherwise it might start to resize things and kind of throw off the, uh, the, the spacing and the positioning of things, okay? One last thing I can kind of um, uh, offer here is there under the view, there's show rulers. And then you see you can bring in your ruler up here at the top to kind of help space things out and show crosshairs, it can kind of set up a little grid here for you. It might make it a little bit easier for you to set things up. So under view, show crosshairs and show rulers. I hope this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to email me or your TA and we'll be happy to help you guys out with that.